Hey Brie, where should I put my vegetable garden? Dee, I'm so glad you asked. There's several factors we need to consider when deciding where to put a vegetable garden. The first one would be how much sunlight we're getting. We typically want a minimum of six hours of sunlight. If we don't have that much, there are still certain things we can grow. But before I get ahead of myself, Dirt Magicians, this video is all about the factors you need to assess and how to assess them to start your first vegetable garden. That's right. I've watched Brie now for a few years garden coach others and get their gardens going. And now it's my turn to get a full and productive garden going. I'm so excited. This is the first video in a series that we're going to be doing all summer long where we're going to follow Dee's journey from a trial and error gardener who puts seeds in the ground but doesn't really know why things work or don't to understanding the science of growing food so that she understands why things work. If this is of interest to you, make sure to hit the subscribe button and follow along on her journey. I can't wait. So Brie, you know that I'm renting this house and the landlords are not going to allow me to put in any in-ground beds. Plus, when I move, which is probably next year, I'm going to have to take whatever I set up with me. So I've decided to grow in Lumox bags and also to convert Rubbermaid totes into these raised beds. Dee, that's so smart. The other benefit of that is if your placement doesn't feel quite right, you can move all of these containers around to a better place. The second benefit is that you don't have to assess your native soil. If we were gonna do an in-ground vegetable bed, we would need to make sure the soil is nice and loose so that the water, the roots can get through, but because we are doing raised beds and containers, you don't have to worry about that. But loose soil is key for a vegetable garden. Great. There are so many benefits of starting off with these Lumox bags and these rubber totes. I am super excited. Right? Okay, Dee, now let's move on to our next factor, which is sunlight. So because we're up here in the Pacific Northwest, we want as much sunlight as possible because we don't get temperatures that exceed 30 to 35 degrees Celsius. So the more sun, the more the plants can photosynthesize. As I already mentioned, the suggested minimum is six hours of sunlight. If you don't get that much though, I really don't want to deter people from trying to grow food. I have grown in less. Things will just grow slower and you might be more prone to diseases, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. So how do we figure where the best sunlight is? you want to map your space and then track the sunlight throughout the day. So the way that we do this is we go out every hour and we shade in on our garden map where the sunlight is hitting. Now this does seem tedious, but it's a great way to relate more intimately to your land and your growing space and you only have to do this once. I think my daughter Aria would love doing this with me. But Brie, doesn't the sun change from season to season, sometimes even month to month, really? It does. What you track in the spring will be slightly different to what you're going to find in the summer. For the most part, though, because the days get longer, we typically actually have more sunlight in those areas we tracked in the spring. That's another great reason that you chose mobile beds, is that if we get the placement wrong, we can always move them later. There's also sun tracking apps that we can use to help understand where the sun is. However, when I've used them, I find I get the direct time and where the sun is at this time of year. But if I wanna see where the sun is in May, in June, I have to pay for that feature. A general rule of thumb is that in the summer, our sun is less angled. It's more directly overhead in an east to west facing way, as opposed to being kind of angled on the north or south sides. If this feels like too much work, another option is to just place your vegetable garden far away from tall objects that are likely going to create shade. This typically is a house, trees, and a shed. Gotta Brie. So I did have some pots out here last year, and this is exactly where I get the most amount of daylight, almost about eight hours in the morning and afternoon as well. And here on this side of the concrete, towards the fence is where I basically get the most amount of sun. And then here towards the house is where I get the least amount of sun. So where should I put my different veggies based on the variability of sun and shade? For plants that originated in hotter areas of the world, like tomatoes, eggplants, peppers, zucchinis, and cucumbers, we're gonna wanna prioritize the sunnier areas of our garden for those as they need the heat and the light the most. We've also listed these vegetables and more in the description box for your reference. The other thing that helps them get heat is by flashing your sunbeam on the like button to let us know you're getting value from this video. I can feel the sunbeam of love from that like button already. 
For the shadier areas of our garden, we can put our leafy greens. In fact, if we place them there, they may last longer into the summer since they're going to be kept cooler from the shade. Which brings me on to my next factor to assess, which are microclimates. So a microclimate is an area of the garden that is just naturally cooler or warmer than the rest of the garden, either because the sun is blocked or heat and sun is trapped in a certain area. Cooler microclimates are typically shaded areas, which keep the moisture in and less sun, so they're cooler. And then hotter microclimates typically exist because the wind is blocked in some way, so it keeps it hotter, or sun is able to bounce off of a surface and really heat up that space. Another way that we can have a hot microclimate is by using a greenhouse that traps in the heat and it keeps the wind out. Hot microclimates are great places for our peppers and our eggplants. Okay, great Brie. So I know where it gets the hottest. It's right in this corner right here. Uh, this is where I get almost eight hours of sun and because the house basically protects from the wind and acts as a barrier, it doesn't also get windy in this corner right here. So that's where I'm gonna grow all of my heat loving vegetables, the tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, uh, potatoes, etc. So I'm really lucky that my rental home has lots and lots of sun but what would people do if they had mostly shade or quite a bit of shade? Yes, they can. Now, as I've already mentioned, things are just going to grow slower in shadier yards, but I really don't want that to deter people from starting their own vegetable garden. You can have a healthier vegetable garden if you pick plants that do better in the shade. So there's a few herbs like mint, oregano, and thyme that will do great in the shade. And then our leafy greens, as I've mentioned, also do better in shade. So kale, chard, lettuce, Asian greens like bok choy and pak choy, or another fun one you can try are mushrooms. One easy way to get started with mushrooms is to just buy one of those indoor kits, remove all of the plastic and packaging and bury it into the soil. We've linked the kits we've used in the past in the description box below. If you wanna try plants like tomatoes, which typically need more heat and sun, we can adjust our microclimate as much as possible to try and facilitate that for these shady yards. So a greenhouse might be an option or even just a plastic dome, something to trap the heat or we can use black mulches, something as simple as a black plastic bag around the soil itself to help have the heat absorb deeper in. Now these tomatoes and other plants are going to grow a lot slower and we're not going to get as much from them as a sunny yard, but it's better than nothing. So I still think it's worth trying. I've done it before in the past just because I wanted to grow tomatoes and that was the space that I had. But of course, start small. Just do this with a few pots, a few plants. You don't wanna make a huge financial investment until you've trialed this. You're right, Brie. We do get caught up in this mindset of like doing everything the best and having everything be perfect instead of just trying and failing and learning through that process. And just getting seeds into the ground is the best way of learning. Well, Brie, that was very helpful. So I'll put my garden where the most amount of sun is and I'll put my leafier greens that I really love eating in a shadier spot, probably along the side of the house. I'll have to figure that out. And the beauty of what the setup that I've got is that because they're all in containers, I can just move them around. All right, Dirt Magicians. So we'll see you next time when we tour five different yards to learn five different ways of starting vegetable gardens in Groville. See you next time.